Across the rugged Indian territory rides a tall young man on a mission of mercy. His medical bag strapped on one hip, his six-shooter on the other. This is Dr. Six-Gun. Exciting adventure series, Dr. Six Gun. Gray Matson, MD, was the gun toting frontier doctor who roamed the length and breadth of the old Indian territory. Friend and physician to white man and Indian alike, the symbol of justice and mercy in the lawless West of the 1870s, this legendary figure was known to all as Dr. Six Gun. I am Pablo, a wanderer, a man of many journeys in far distances. All right, to be honest, a peddler, but no ordinary peddler. In my pack, I have the finest lace from Spain. Knives as sharp as a woman's tongue. And my friend was Doc Six Gun. Of that I am most proud. Ah, remember me? Oh, could I forget this one? This black raven, Midnight? Ah, midnight. Ah, <laughs> it is true, he talks. Though what he says does not have much wisdom. But he is only a bird, so I forgive him. Ah, the stage! Uh, the state. Oh, uh, thank you, my friend. Uh, he reminds me that our story began with the overland stagecoach from the railhead to Frenchman's Ford. I was traveling back from purchasing my latest shipment of rare Spanish lace, which is manufactured by an Irish family in Philadelphia. Along the trail west from the railhead to Frenchman's Ford, the overland stage rattled along, swaying like the senorita dancing with a rose in her teeth. High on the box, the driver bounced, the rain slack in his hand. The guard was dreaming of beer. Cool beer with foam, his carbine wedged between his knees. The sun beat down and the cloud of dust kicked up by the horses hung on the still air. I was down in the coach with midnight when it started. What the... Hey, Charlie, that was a shot. Yeah. Hi up there. Come on, boy. Hey, up there. What's happening? Hold up. You got a gun? I got several. Well, use them. Can't get nothing from the top of this. Ha, ha. I think you got one. Hey, up there. Up there. Up. Ain't no use, Charlie. Charlie Thomas! Mr. 
Charlie Chan. Dead. One of you men run for Doc Sitz. What happened? Hold up. There are two dead ones in this page. If someone does not hurry for Doc, there will be at least three. The driver is dying. Oh, Jim. Yes. Oh, my. Well, here's the Doc now. Yeah, doc. Hey, Doc, look here. Pablo. Doc seems to be the trouble. This way, Doc. Where is he? Inside. All right, you man, stand back. Just stand back. He's hurt bad, I think. Yeah. Here, give me a hand. Oh. Oh. Easy, easy. Yeah. Put him down now. Easy. Yeah. Shorty, run to the saloon and bring the top off a dice table to carry him on. All right, Jim. Just take it easy. He has bled much. Mm. Doc. Doc. I'm here, Jim. Lottie. She, she's due in a month, ain't she? Sure, Jim. I'll take care of her, don't worry. Yeah, you... You take care of her for me, Doc. <coughs> Jim. You know who held up the stage? They were masked, Doc. I saw them. I know. Jim. Jim Oliver. I know the way he rides. Oh! Stiff like a... like an Easterner. Jim Oliver. His gang. <laughs> Jim. Oh. Tell the boys not to bother breaking up the dice game for the tabletop. He's dead. Well, Pablo, you gonna move that queen, or you figure you're sitting on it till it hatches? <laughs> Doc, you have an idea. Now, that is what I need to win this chess game. A litter of baby pawns. <laughs> oh, quiet midnight. Who's playing this game? You or I? Uh, checkmate. <laughs> Bird's right, Pablo. It is checkmate. Uh, well, it's about time to blow out the lamp and get to bed. I got a case of scarlet fever up on Mesa Verde. Got to get started early in the morning. One more game, Doug. Just one more. You've beaten me three games already tonight. Double or nothing for five dollars. Huh? I'm tired of chess. Well, anything else then? Cards, maybe? with your deck. <laughs> a game of skill. Knife throwing. Doc, double or nothing, I can throw a knife and hit the ace of spades from 20 feet. Ah, oh, it's late, Pablo. Some other time. 30 feet. Ah, no, not even blindfold. I'm going to... Oh, who's that? Oh, can't be Jim Henry's wife. She isn't due for another month. Go to tell him to go away? No, no. It might be something serious. Yes? Doc? Doc Sixgun? Yes, what is it? I'm from the crazy wild past the Royal Grande. What's the trouble? Well, one of the hands, Art Laramie, he had this longhorn at the end of his rope and the saddle girth busted. Spun him right under. Hurt bad? Legs busted, I think. Anyways, he couldn't get up. Remuda boss told me to ride into town and fetch you out. Couldn't you go in the morning, Doc? No. No, if it's a compound break, I'd better get out there before Gang Green sets in. Pablo, will you saddle Sage for me? I'll meet you around front in five minutes. Quick! You can sneeze, Doc. Thanks, Doc. Thanks. You better get some sleep, cowboy. It's a long ride in from the crazy Y. No, I better ride back with you, Doc. Trail's out. There's a rock slide through the Arroyo Grande. I'll have to lead you around through the hills. It's mighty rough country in the dark. <laughs> Up ahead. Yeah, boys will be sure glad to see you, Doc. How come a top hand like Art Laramie climbed on a bronc with a loose saddle girth? Yeah, just give way, that's all. It could have heard the snap clear out the north range. We uh, turn this way, Doc. Oh, what? Uh, oh, say. Uh, up into the hills? I told you. The Royal Grande Trail is out. I don't see any rock slide. It's there, in the shadows. Come on, Doc, this way. Wait a minute. I know this country. There's no trail past the Arroyo up there. That's the way we're going, Doc. What are you doing? Doc, hand me that gun of yours. Listen, I haven't got time for... I ain't fooling, Doc. Your gun. Pull out of that holster with one thumb and one finger. I don't get this. I hand it over by the barrel. Now the other one. What other one? That snub-nosed derringer you carry in your bag. 
You aren't from the crazy Y. Yeah, it's better. Now, right ahead of me. Where are we going? Never you mind. Just get moving. Help that way. Help. Come on, say. Hip. Listen, I've got patients I have to see in the morning. Keep riding, Doug. There's a, a little kid out at the blind quick camp. She's got scarlet fever. Now, that's too bad. Where are you taking me? Why don't you shut up, Doc, and ride? I can see you right clear in the moonlight. And I got a steady hand with a six-gun, too. Oh, Sage. Hey, what's the matter, Doc? I got to dismount. My horse, he's, he's picked up a stone. All right, go ahead. You don't look like he favors any foot. That's his left hind foot. Come on, boy. Hurry up, Doc. Ah, yeah, here it is. Uh, uh, oh, oh, stand now, stand. Hey, you hold him for me, will you? It's tender. Yeah, all right, Doc. Hand me up the reins. Here you are. Come on, Come on. Come on you. Now, give me that gun. Let go of me. The gun. You want it? Here it is. Okay, Doc. On your feet. Come on, get up. Now, uh, well, climb back on that horse. Uh, stand, Sage. Ride ten feet ahead of me. And if you so much as turn around, I'll plant a slug of lead right between your shoulder blades. Think. Did you bring him? Sure. Climb down, Doc. Now, what's the idea? This way, Doc. I'll take care of the horses. Yeah. This way. What did you bring me up here for? I'm a doctor. I yes, have to I know you're a doctor. Get inside. Here he is. Bring him over here where I can see him. Yeah, that's him. Doc Sixgun. You're Jeb Oliver. Yep. You heard of me? The Overland Stage came into Frenchman's Ford this afternoon carrying three corpses. Driver said you and your gang held him up. He got that much out before he died. Listen, Doc, I ain't got no time for talking. I... I took one of them slugs from that stage right here. I'll bring that lantern over. I want you to fix me up, Doc. You hear? Open your shirt. You, I said bring that lantern over. Now, listen, you. Go ahead, Cantrell. Too bad that guard didn't shoot straighter. Who put this dirty rag over it? There's the lantern. Hold it down. Well, let me see now. Take it easy, Doc. Mm-hmm. You know, Jim Potter, the driver, he had a wife, three children, near four. What is it, Doc? How bad is it? A half inch higher, Jeb, and we could have saved the territory 18 foot of rope. Am I going to die? I don't know. I have to get that bullet out. Well... Close to your heart. I've got to probe. Listen, Doc. You get that bullet out. I'll try. Cantrell here is going to have a bead on you, Doc. Something happens to me. Listen, Oliver, I'm a doctor. It's my business to keep men from dying. Any man. Even if it is a rotten, murdering snake like you. You shut up. You can't. Call. You shut up, Cantrell. You don't understand a man like the Doc here. I'll need boiling water and some clean rags. Doc, you fix me up and I'll pay you good. Oliver, I wouldn't take a copper penny from you. 
Sure, Doc, sure. I understand. But, uh, you fix me up, won't you? You won't let me die. Not if I can help it. Yeah, I figured that. But just the same, Cantrell. Yeah, Jim. Keep your gun out. Don't be afraid to use it. Doc, if I die, so do you. Now, listen to me, Oliver. I've given you as much laudanum as I can. You understand? Yeah. It's still going to hurt when I go after that slug. If you move, you'll die. You want to call a couple of your pack rats to hold you down? I ain't going to need nobody to hold me down. Go ahead, Doc. Get that gun out of my way, Cantrell. I ain't moving this. I ain't taking no chances. I'm going to have to probe within a half inch of Oliver's heart. Yet, you wouldn't want me nervous, would you? Move back, Cantrell. It's better. All right. Here we go. It won't be so bad at first. (laughs) You know, Doc, it'd be funny if I went like this. Real funny. I fit through the whole war. First with the Union, then with the South. Whichever paid. (laughs) Yeah. I've been shot at, knived, came close to being hanged back in Missouri following Jesse. You rode with the James boys? A spell. They threw me out. Frank said I was too sinful. They was pious men, the Jameses. Didn't hold with swearing and killing. Drink. All right. Hold it now, Oliver. <clears throat> Look where it got Jesse. Him shot in the back by Bob Ford. And me gunned down by some fat, cross-eyed stage guard. <clears throat> Get that light closer, Cantrell. What are you doing? What are you doing? What happened to Jeb? He fainted. There. There it is. There it is. Right next to the heart. He's coming too. Well, here it is, Oliver. The bullets. How about it, Doc? Will I live? You're lucky, Oliver. When they finally get around to hanging you, the rope will probably break. I'm bandaging the wound. Now, if you stay in one place, you'll be all right. I can't ride. Right. Listen, Oliver, if you so much as sit up in the next couple of days, you'll start hemorrhaging. Uh, You'll uh, bleed to death, you understand? Sure, sure. Thanks, Doc. You saved my life. Oliver, for the rest of my life, that's something I'll have to apologize to myself for. If I could, I'd take you in right now to hang. That's all right, Doc. I understand. We're professional men, you and me. I understand. He's all better, Doc. Jeb ain't gonna die. You heard me. Now, get my horse saddled. You ain't going nowhere, Doc. I pulled that bullet out of your rotten heart, Oliver. That's all I want to do with you. Doc... I was not to lead the marshal back up here? I will not. Now, Doc, you want to get away, don't you? To see that kid with scarlet fever and all those sick people in Frenchman's Ford? Why, they're depending on you. You want to get back to all them people, don't you, Doc? All right, Oliver, I'll give you five days. By then, you can ride enough to get away. That's fair, Doc. Cantrell saddled his horse. 
Cantrell, I said... I heard you, Jim. Get Doc's horse. Doc, you say he ain't gonna die. Nope, not if that bandage stays on and he doesn't hemorrhage. Yeah, that's what I figured. Stand over there, Doc. But back away from him. Cantrell, I told you... I just want to make sure somebody takes real good care of you, Jeb. If you was to move sudden, it wouldn't be healthy for you. Would it? Get away from him. Now, don't you worry, Doc. I'm Jeb's best friend. His best friend. Ain't I, Jeb? Cantrell, what are you doing? Now, don't you fret none, Jeb. I'm going to take good care of you. Real good care. Get away from him, Cantrell. He can't now be get moved. get back, Doc. I still got a gun on you. Cantrell, whatever else Jeb may be, he's my patient. I don't know what you've got in mind. Doc, I got $15,000 in federal currency in mind. I got it in mind that Jeb here ain't going to be able to ride for maybe a week. We're sitting ducks here for any fumble foot lawman out of Frenchman's Four. Cantrell, you're crazy. Keep back, Doc. All right, Jeb. You rest easy. Just think about all the times you had me fetch and carry. The time you knocked me down and kicked me in front of all the boys. I'm telling you, he can't be moved. Is that a fact? I hold still, Doc. Hold. You know, he looks to me like he... Might take a sudden turn for the worse. Can't fail you, low oh, down. Save your strength, Jeb. Save your strength. There's going to be one man riding at the head of this outfit. Now, now, stand back, Doc. I'm going to take care of your patient for you. Well, Doc, you... Rotten, murdering, no good. He's dead, eh? Well, that's too bad, Doc. That's real bad. Spanish is a loving tongue, soft as music, sweetly played. Was a girl I learned it from, a living down some more away. I don't look much like a lover. Ah, you bet. All right, all right, bird of ill omen. So Pablo is not handsome, do you have to say so? In the house of the man who has been hanged, you do not mention the rope. Ah, you bet. Hey, oh, 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 oh. Where are you heading? The crazy wise, senor. I'll ride with you if you don't mind. Why not? Even in the grave, a man likes company. Well, Pedler, you won't do much business at the crazy Y. Boys don't get paid till the end of the month. There ain't so much as a Mexican dollar in the whole spread. My friend, I travel without portfolio. I follow my friend, Doc Sixgun. Doc, is he at the crazy Y? Last night, he was called. One of the vaqueros had broken a leg. Oh, yeah, that's too bad. I ride for the crazy Y. Only I've been out in the territory rounding up Mustangs for breaking. Must be one of my buddies. Maybe. You hear tell which Waddy got throwed? Uh, some fellow named um, uh, Art Laramie. Laramie? Now that sure is right strange. What's strange? There doesn't a week go by without some crazy cowboy breaks an arm or a head or a leg. No, that ain't it. It's just that I marked Laramie. <laughs> Don't move, Doc. I still got a bead on you. Cantrell, if I ever get a chance... You ain't gonna get a chance, Doc. Jeb left orders that if he didn't come through, the boys was to see that you ended up on that cottonwood. At the end of an 18-foot manila necktie. But I didn't kill him. Oh, the boys are very simple, Doc. They ain't educated. All they'll know is Jeb bled to death when you was working on him. So as the next in line, it'll be up to me to see that his dying wishes are carried out. Boy's very sentimental about dying wishes. Why don't you just shoot, Cantrell, and get it over with? Oh, we'll wait, Doc. First, we'll need a grave for Jeb here. And seeing as you killed him, I think it's only fitting that you dig it. Deep 
enough, Doc. Hey, pull him out of there. Come on now. Up. Okay, get him. Yeah, give him a hand. Oh, I tell you, I didn't kill him. Cantrell did. You shouldn't have said that, Doc. Now, Cantrell and Jeb read together since the war. He pulled that bandage off. You can't cover up that way, Doc. You killed Jeb and the boss will see you hang for it. Hang him up. Hang him up. What do we want? All right, Cantrell. They aren't going to believe me. Get it over with. Garth, break out your rope. I got a nice noose all ready for you, Doc. Whitey, bring his horse up. Doc, you're going to take your last ride on your own horse. A nice short ride. We drop that noose around your neck, run it over to the cottonwood there, and then once across your horse's rump with a quirt and Never then... mind, Cantrell. I'm the coroner at Frenchman's Ford. I've made out death certificates after hanging. Well, maybe you'd like to make out your own in advance, hmm? Here she goes. Over the limb. Ah. Uh, pull it up a little. We wouldn't want Doc's heels dragging on the ground. All right, Doc. Hands behind you. Why don't you shoot, Cantrell? Oh, hanging. That's the way Jeb would have wanted it. That loose enough, Doc? Wouldn't want to stop the circulation in your wrists. Thanks. Give my hand up, Doc. Right. Oh, there, safe boy. Sam now. Uh, get the knot under his ear, Cantrell. That's the way it's done. I see it a couple of times in Dodge City. All right, Doc. Got any last words? All right. Go ahead, Garth. Give him the quirt. Hey, what happened? The rope. The rope. He, he's still riding. Come. Hey, Al, get him. That rope didn't break. Look up there the limb. A knife cut it through clean. Get after him. He's got the marshal and the posse back here. Hey, you. You ride down to the foot of the trail. Stay out. A man can't ride far with his hands tied behind him. What do we do to find him? Run him down. We can't take no chances. I'll get gone. Remember, he's the man that killed Jeff. Oh. oh. Still there, Sage. Got to get my hands on tight. Oh, boy. Steady, boy. Quiet now. My hands. Steady, Sage. There. Yeah, they're loose. Oh, there. Stand, Sage. Uh, ah, rope. Doc. Pablo. You doubled back, eh? What, what happened? I should be swinging out there on the end of that rope. <laughs> Remember, I bet you five dollars I could hit the ace of spades at 20 feet. It was my knife that cut the rope in two. Pablo, I owe you five dollars. <laughs> but how did you get here? Well, I met that Art Laramie. Oh, he walks pretty good for a man with a broken leg. So? I followed your path. Well, you turned off the Arroyo Trail. Uh, I didn't know if you'd be able to. <laughs> Why not? With a full moon? Who else but Doc Six Gun would leave a white pill in the trail for every turn? Uh, uh, <laughs> we've got to get out of here. Cantrell and his men will be coming back. No, I don't think so. <laughs> there, you hear? A posse? From the crazy way. I think the bad men have run into a neat ambush. Hey, midnight? Ah, uh, checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad your knife throwing is better than your chest. <laughs> come on, we better ride. You come back to the crazy Y, huh? No, no, I've got that kid to take care of. The one with scarlet fever. Oh, yes. I'd better get started up to the Mesa Verde. <laughs> Six Gun is played by Carl Weber and Pablo by William Griffiths. 